My name is Cornelis van Lid and I work at Utrecht University in the Netherlands. My main field of studies is Islamic studies, but I also develop digital methods and data analysis for humanities research broadly conceived. Over the last few years, I devoted a lot of time and effort to the study of manuscripts in this regard. And the, the main fruit of uh, that labor has been my book, Among Digitized Manuscripts, Philology, Codicology, Paleography in a Digital World. So I can only encourage you to go check it out. It's available in open access. The URL in the bottom right corner will take you there. But in very short, the book is uh, a first attempt really at figuring out what digitized manuscripts are by first giving a theoretical underpinning of what they are and then providing a practical toolbox how to work with them. So uh, for that uh, theoretical part, the main point I'm making is that digitization is not a neutral practice. It's an editorial decision and uh, it can be done in several ways. And it's good to have some kind of vocabulary in order to speak of the quality of a digital surrogate, uh, to kind of be able to describe the digital materiality, if you will. Now for, those, for that practical toolbox, <clears throat> I have been thinking of a couple of things that are all uh, free to use, relatively easy to learn, and uh, uh, capable of doing so by yourself. And it ranges from something as simple as making vector images so that you can redraw glyphs that you encounter so that you can maybe catalog them um, in a better way or you can study them more flexibly. Uh, going over into uh, uh, editorial practices uh, that means how to actually transcribe manuscripts and uh, then moving into computer vision, how to do automated analysis of photos of manuscripts, which I think is going to be the main uh, breakthrough in our field and in fact across the humanities. So we're familiar with working with manuscripts in this way, right? We go to a library and we hold the actual artifact that someone hundreds of years created. Uh, but as this is quite a uh, laborious process, we have become used by now to a working method something like this. We sit in our own office and uh, we bring manuscripts together, that's to say digital surrogates of them, and uh, some of them we print out, some of them we put on a screen, and in this way we can uh, compare them by hand uh, and bring them together in uh, whatever kind of analysis we're doing. Now the next step as I see it is to give over some of that analysis to the computer. And so if we have photos of one particular manuscript, page spreads, right, we can give them to a computer at a rather rapid pace. We can just feed them to a computer uh, and we can actually say to a computer, just look at the ink and extract just that and stack those layers of ink on, th on top of each other. And what we end up getting is a snapshot that kind of sees through the entire manuscript and without having actually looked at it ourselves, we are now able to see where the text block is, how big the text block is, how big the margins are, how many lines there are. And these are basic bits of information which we can then use again in a next step of analysis to get closer uh, to whatever purpose we're after. Now, what would be one kind of purpose uh, that we could go after. In this presentation, I want to draw our attention to uh, sort of the high-risk, high-reward uh, kind of uh, endeavors that are becoming more and more feasible in our fields. And it is really to 
build up a picture of a literary heritage from the ground up. This is becoming more and more possible now. What do I mean by that? Well, right now we look at a civilization and we, if we want to assess its literary heritage, well, we have some kind of canon in which we list the top 100 best books and it is meant to say something about that civilization itself. And um, we basically do so from printed books, we select those, uh, the, the, from, from you know, critical editions, we select those which are of the highest quality. And uh, that kind of work has now uh, turned into these online uh, plain text, uh, text databases. So for uh, the Greek literary tradition, it's Thesaurus Lingue Greke, uh, you have a Maktaba Shamila for uh, Islamic texts. Chinese Text Project is another fine example of bringing um, together uh, the best, the most noteworthy texts from the Chinese uh, literary uh, heritage. And uh, similarly, we are familiar with Perseus, of course. A last <coughs> example that I want to draw our attention to is interesting in this regard, 18th century collections online already tries to move beyond it by not just incorporating the very best, which would only yield, say, a couple of thousand texts, but tries to include simply as much text as possible, and, um, uh, but still relying, of course, just on printed texts. Now, we all know that mm, the number of manuscripts far uh, outreach the number of uh, printed books. So, if we want to challenge the canon, it would be a very interesting point of departure to actually go back to the main evidence. Uh, right now, there seems to be some sort of black box in the middle that that outputs this uh, high cultural canon that we're familiar with. Uh, but what if we could go back to the raw matter that uh, really underlies the civilization and build up an image from that? So we're able to do this because there are plenty of manuscripts that have been digitized and that this is coming from digitizedmedievalmanuscripts.org is only giving a partial image, right? It's still skewed towards European manuscripts, this website, and, and that's great. But, uh, um, you know, just speaking for Islamic studies, uh, I personally have um, close to 200,000 manuscripts uh, in digitized form, and I think it would be feasible to go up to 400K, 500K, uh, given that we guesstimate that there are about two to five million extant uh, Islamic manuscripts. Um, that would uh, that would give us like a, a full, say, like twenty five percent of uh, the entire um, manuscript material available um, to be included in our analysis. What we need next to these manuscripts are, of course, technologies which have been developed plentiful. Um, there is already uh, handwriting analysis, and I'm not speaking of extracting text, but I'm just speaking of like interpreting the style and the uh, uh, and the shapes of of letters. Mm. There is, there are extensive packages to do rudimentary computer vision. Um, analysis and uh, a lot of the uh, other kind of supporting technologies that are freely available, they're there. And thirdly, what we need next to the manuscripts and the technologies, we need some kind of metadata to enrich and, and kickstart uh, this kind of research. And we have it in the uh, presence of catalog. Catalog details provide a lot of metadata and, of course, these plain text 
uh, corpora that sort of represent the canon, they can also help us in this regard. So I'm just going to give a couple of examples of how this would be uh, proceeding. So first we start with the very simple fact of one photo of one page or two pages, uh, a page spread, from which we can derive text block size, but also the percentage that a text block occupies versus the whole page, number of lines, size of writing, amount of glosses, because once we know where the text block is, we can also look just at the margins to see if there are any writings there, and perhaps some um, uh, basic facts about different inks. These all seem like um, very basic building blocks, but I suspect that they could be indicators that could help us along the way to connect manuscripts along among this huge corpus to see uh, trends within the corpus, say for period, region, or genre. Moving on to the level of volumes, we can look at handwriting style categories. Uh, it's more advanced, but uh, some uh, research groups have developed uh, quite extensive um, analysis in this regard. Illustrations recognition would be relatively easy, but perhaps the further um, analysis of it would be a bit more advanced. Then stamps and ownership statements are a key aspect in this. Uh, very easy to detect. And uh, once you have collected all stamps, regardless of exactly what they are among your entire corpus, then you can start to uh, do more detailed analysis of them and eventually stepping in as the researcher and actually identifying how oh, this stamp means that it belongs to this person from this period and place. And now you have an actual data point that connects uh, a lot of different manuscripts uh, through that stamp. Colophon layout analysis is, at least for Islamic manuscripts, uh, a very promising field where I think that simply the mere shape and layout and, and, and sort of uh, uh, visual aspects of a colophon can reveal, say, the genre or region if you have photos of the codex itself, then binding uh, analysis could be done as well, uh, such as uh, inscriptions <coughs> uh, in the codex um, and um, uh, similar kind of um, uh, external aspects. So if you have uh, lots of volumes that somehow connect with each other through a collection, now then the metadata really comes in where perhaps you have catalog details of the collection which will help you to establish um, basically sort of a ground truth that you can then compare to um, manuscripts, to volumes that you don't have a lot of catalog details for uh, to try to uh, enrich um, your information about those manuscripts. And I think um, this will be uh, a, already a place where you can start to um, categorize, div divide them into periods, regions, and topics. And then with the other kind of metadata from the plain text corpora, you can try to find uh, text that you know for sure, uh, if you have a manuscript that you know for sure is a copy of a certain text that is present in the plain text database, then you can try to establish a very rough handwriting recognition model to achieve some kind of fingerprint. It doesn't need to be precise at all. It just needs to be able to identify that manuscript as, that, uh, as a copy of that specific text. And with that, you can walk over to unidentified manuscripts and try to match the fingerprints and see if you can uh, identify texts in these other manuscripts. So uh, with that, you would be able to connect a huge amount of manuscripts with each other and start to see patterns and relationships that uh, 
will quickly outpace any established canon and perhaps would be uh, grounds for uh, a rethinking uh, of um, the evolution of uh, the literary heritage of the civilization you're working on. In order to do it, the prerequisites are there, but we still need a couple more things in order for it really to work. And now we're looking at this. Well, if we go to a website, we look at an image of a manuscript and it's great, but what we would also like is to just see the numbers that go behind it so that we can give that to a computer and let the computer do its magic. So we need some kind of programmatic access to it so that we can write pieces of software, just small scripts that uh, we can fire off and uh, they would automatically take in uh, images of manuscripts. It also requires photos of all parts of the artifacts, uh, including the codex, of course, and no digital watermarks. It's a crucial aspect. I'm speaking specifically to librarians here. Um, um, it, it's a real pity to see that there are digital watermarks included in the photos. Uh, this could really hamper automated analysis. Now, having holding information in the file name would be very beneficial to trace back the origin of one specific photo because if you just download an entire manuscript and you're just looking at by yourself then it's no problem you understand where this particular file is coming from but if you collect uh, thousands or hundreds of thousands of manuscripts and perhaps even just select those photos that contain a stamp or an ownership statement, then you can quickly see how one image can uh, lose its relationship to its origin. And lastly, um, I don't have a very satisfactory answer to this yet, but we need some kind of way to communicate our results and perhaps a library catalog would be the best hub for this kind of information. So that if one person does a layout analysis of a manuscript, someone else can just simply uh, take that layout analysis information and build on top of it to provide, say, a handwriting style analysis and then feed that back into the catalog so that someone can come in and find all manuscripts that have a similar certain style so that they can train a handwriting recognition model that uh, performs generally all right for this particular style. Um, that's it for me in a nutshell. Um, this is just thinking through where digital manuscript studies is going. And uh, uh, I think a key aspect here is that we um, are at this point where we can stop thinking about digitized manuscripts as manuscripts and we can start to think of them as digitized, as data. And that will be a, a key step in the, some very exciting developments in our field. Thank you.